Well, good morning, YouTube. I'm on my way to the dealer. I knew I shouldn't have bought an American car. Freaking junk. I should have went and bought me a Toyota. Oh, you know I was kidding with that, right? No way. Nothing against Toyota. No, I love my GM products. This has actually been an outstanding car. Um, I've had it three years now, and the only thing I'm having to ever bring it in for is the heater in the seat stopped working, which from what I understand, uh, all makes of cars or whatever kind of have this problem. I'm not sure how many people actually make the heaters it might only even be one company that makes the heaters for every car maker i mean it's, it's not unheard of there's only like a couple of makers of airbag stuff so like a lot of the import cars are having recalls on airbags because then being faulty so it's like all across the line <clears throat> so yeah i mean i can't really complain three years i'm at thirty-five thousand miles and the only thing to break on this car is the uh, heated seat I've already brought it up here once. They diagnosed it as the uh, heating pad being out, so I had to order it, and now it's in. My only problem is uh, this dealer happens to be where I used to live. My friend is the service manager. There was a glitch in the matrix with this car. I don't know, probably because it was a deal, uh, GM ordered this car for the show car circuit. Uh, Somehow the warranty is stated to have started in March of 2017. I didn't buy this car until September of 2018. So technically my warranty has been expired like for quite a while. So he said uh, he can work with it. He can get it done. Um, I'm not sure. You know, I don't know. He, he's the service manager there. But they're going to get it covered under warranty for me. So I'm willing to make the drive because he's working with it. Either that or I'd either have to get the part and do it myself, which I really don't want to rip the seat apart, or uh, just pay to have the dealer to do it. I'll, f I'll find out what the actual cost is. It should be on my thing, but I'll find out what the cost is and uh, share that with you. So a little bit of a drive, about two and a half hours each way. Luckily, this car gets tremendously good gas mileage. You can see right there, I'm getting I'm averaging 34.8 right now. So, that'll probably go up a little bit. I just got off the interstate and starting to go down to a little bit of a slower speed. So, it'll, it'll probably bump up to about like 38 by the time I get to the dealer. Yeah. So that's what we're doing today. Get my uh, heated seat fixed. Plus, I run this thing all the time with my back problems. I get in the car, I like boom, I hit the uh, the seat heater. I will never ever own another car without it. And it just, I just lucked out that this car had it. When uh, you know the HHR got totaled out, I was just in a hurry for a car, and I knew Chevy had the cruise. I was looking at it. Um, Matter of fact, yeah, I was just at this dealer. I think that's when I had the uh, transmission serviced on the uh, Camaro, maybe. No, that's right. I just went to that dealer because I knew uh, it's where I bought the 50th Camaro. And uh, I stopped by there to talk to that salesman. He wasn't there, and I picked up a uh, brochure. And that's when I found out that there's a hatchback, and the HHR was so handy being a hatchback. And I went online, found this in New Orleans, if you guys remember that story. I have a whole video on me picking it up. But, uh, yeah, so basically this car stickered at 30 grand. It's a show car. You see, it's got every option in the world you could ever put in a Chevy Cruze. It's the hatchback, it's the premium, the orange color's a, a more expensive paint. It's the RS package, it has leather, it has bows, it has heated steering wheel heated seats it has the collision avoidance lane change stuff this car is freaking loaded out so and i got for 20 i got ten thousand off like i said i bought it in 2018 september of 2018 and this car is a 17 like i said gm ordered it 
for the uh, show car circuit. So they put it in a truck and took it from car show to car show, whatever they did with it. it only had 40 miles on when I bought it. So it wasn't like a demo. It wasn't anything people road tested or anything like that. It was just brought, you know, like when you go to uh, a new car show, those cars are spinning on the pedestals and they're sitting there for people to look at. Well, that's what this one was. Not sure what show it went to, how many it was at, but yeah. I'll show you later. I get the window sticker in the back. It actually says dealer to whom delivered General Motors. Pretty cool. So, I mean, it's not like a rare car or anything fancy, but it does have kind of a, a unique little history to it. <sighs> All right, that's my uh, ramble for the morning. Let's get to the dealer and get this thing fixed, and I'll check in with you when it's all done and it's not fixed oh just my luck right uh, so they put in the heater for the seat and it still won't come on I can't get the seat to warm up so they are ordering a control module they said either the control module went bad and it burned up the seat the heater or the heater and the seat burned up shorted or whatever and it took out the module so now I have to make this trip again and mind you this is the road I had two deer strikes I, I hit the deer with the 50 Camaro and then this is the road that uh, somebody hit the deer left it dead I hit it and it rolled me into the ditch and we hit the culvert and rolled the HHR over not my favorite road so I was coming up there's a Y in the road so I, I took to the right, that's the way I need to go, and damn, there's not a deer standing right in the friggin' road, and luckily I slowed down, because then I saw his buddy over there on the right shoulder start to come my way, and I just stood on the brakes. I'm like, I don't even want the thing being indecisive anywhere near my car. Uh, he ran off, or she, I don't know, ran off into the woods off to the right, and then I proceeded. Yeah, it's... Oh, I don't like seeing deer, especially on this road. So, there you go. That's the update. I still don't have uh, heat for the seat, which I know right now is still warm, but like I said, with having back problems, being able to heat the seat up, it, it really helps. It feels nice. It really helps kind of loosen everything up. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, I think he said it's going to be like 10 days before it's even in. I'll probably get it done when we get back from vacation. Alright, long drive home. All right, check this out. <laughs> Cruise SS Heavy Chevy. It about looks like a dang car lot, don't it? But wait, there's more. <laughs> GTO and the 50. Look at how dirty they get in the garage. This car hadn't even been out that long. Oh, I just cleaned it. Well, I got the whole garage swept out, got everything cleaned up. So now it's time to put everything back. Hello! <laughs> you know your garage is big when it echoes like that. All right, guys. I gotta get these cars put up and I've got a pack. We've got a vacation to go on. Can't wait to share that with y'all. Hope you enjoy it. What a day. It's always tiring when you're going on vacation and try to get everything ready. So I got a brand new suitcase. I got that packed. Still a little bit on the heavy side. So I don't know. This is all a learning process. I try to pack like I'm actually leaving to go overseas right now and spend a year or two out there. I want to see what works, what doesn't work. Right now, those boots, if you remember, I bought some hiking boots uh, on one of the last camping trips. I know they're going to be big in a suitcase. I know they're only two pounds, but oh, they they eat up so much space. So I'm, I'm 
that's one thing I'm going to have to relook at. I don't think I can be able to travel with shoes that big. It really sucks when you have a size 13, too. It eats up the entire suitcase. But you got the suitcase packed. Everything's good. Um, it's a brand new suitcase. I have a discount code for you down below if you want, if you're in the market for a suitcase, if you're traveling. I also have a brand new camera bag that I'll be traveling with. Uh, my old tried and true uh, little Canon bag here. Problem is this thing doesn't hold a laptop. It doesn't uh, offer me any flexibility. The other bag is a roll top. I did a review on these things, but uh, just to reiterate, you know, it's, it's nice. So that way, if I want to take that bag with the camera gear in there, I can throw like my raincoat or my puff jacket or some food or something in there. Where th that bag was just limited to that. Now the one big difference is like this has been my tried and true tried and true drone the Mavic 2 ever since I re re uh, retired the other one it's a really good drone it's fairly heavy so it does really good in the wind it has collision sensors uh, front back uh, on the bottom and everything like that this drone is really sweet man I love this drone it also has like pre-programmed flight modes so it can do circles or a boomerang it, it can it can do certain pass it does take up quite a bit of space and the biggest downfall to it is I'm not sure how many people have a laptop probably a lot of people you know you got something about that big that black thing that transformer for charging well like this drone has a big transformer for charging the batteries this little guy here I can charge this off a of USB very convenient very small very lightweight not that even that this drone is very heavy but you can see quite a bit of size difference. I got this specifically for traveling. There's a lot of European countries that your drone can't weigh more than 250 grams and this comes in at 249. So I can fly this in a lot of countries. Now I know I'm not leaving the country and I can take this one but I want to try this one. It's what I got it for for traveling. I could throw it in a backpack really lightweight the only downside to this drone is like these set these eyes here in the front are fake. There's no collision sensors on this drone whatsoever. This thing will just fly into whatever. It really shouldn't be much of a problem, but you know, if it does break signal, it'll do a return to home. And if I break signal and I can't see what the camera's seeing, it could fly into something and get damaged. So it's a little worrying with this little guy, but and it doesn't do any of the uh, automated sequences because it doesn't have collision avoidance so they won't allow it to do so I'm gonna be leaving this one here trying this one out I've flown it before this is a great flying little drone I mean I haven't had any problem but this has just been my go-to I took this one to Panama with me uh, it's been like the camping videos you see it's all been this drone so uh, yeah, I'm gonna try a little guy out. This is what I got it for for traveling. So, well, <laughs> worrying about that. Like I said, this is all just a learning process. I'm just really trying to learn how to cut down on the weight. I mean, this camera bag, like this camera, the big DSLR is gonna go in there. It's heavy, but I can put a really long telephoto lens on there, and it allows me to bring you stuff in great detail. Like when I was in Amsterdam, there was a swing on top of a building. I was able to zoom in and get a fairly good shot of that. Russia, there was a lot of beautiful uh, architecture that was very high up, and I was able to get that with the long lens. The GoPro just doesn't do it. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I'm travel, if I left the travel world today, could I live without the DSLR? Probably could, but I think I would really suffer and lose the quality of stuff I can bring. So. It's heavy and stuff like that, but you know, I guess it's the price you pay when you do YouTube. Also, like my suitcase too. I mean, it's the first time using this suitcase, so I'm still kind of learning how everything. But it's the first time I'm bringing a a kettle with me. This is the first time I'm bringing like the coffee grinder, and I mean, not that it takes up much space, but it's the boots that are eating up a lot of space. Which I did utilize some of the boots. I put my the uh, AeroPress coffee thing in there in one of the boots and the bag of coffee in the other boot try to use some of that space up but yeah all right guys by the time you see this we will actually have already been landed and be at our location filming bringing you some great footage don't forget if you're looking for a suitcase or anything like that i have 
tons of links down below to give you discounts on all types of great merchandise. And if you shop Amazon, please go through my store and a little commission for sending you there. And it helps buy stuff like these drones to bring you great footage. I know everybody loves the aerial footage like that. So does anybody have a guess where we're going? Any guesses? Leave me, let me know in the comments down below. All I can tell you is that it's going to be out west. We're going to break the east coast here for a little bit. We're doing a lot of camping in that here. So we're going to go out west. I think this is going to surprise you. It's a very underrated place, and I think you're going to be surprised what this state has to offer. So let me know where you think we are going. All right, everyone. Uh, we got kind of an early flight. So going to get this video made, get this camera packed up, and uh, get all this stuff put away so we can hit the road first thing in the morning, get our vacation, and get you some good videos. I appreciate the support. Thank you, everyone, very, very much. It means a lot to me that when you subscribe, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. It all helps the channel, believe it or not. So thank you very much. All right, everyone, stay safe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one from Destination Vacation. Thanks for watching. Thank you.